Liverpool once again. This time it's carried on by Jason Doherty. They need a big input from him. Higgins up there. An opportunity maybe. Donald Vaughan recycled once again. Back it comes here towards end of Varley. Kicking and kicking under pressure and cooking over the bar. End of Varley gets his first point of the All-Ireland final. And once again it's back to a three-point game. again with McGlynn, 45 metres from the target. McGlynn once more. Cohen trying to get in a track tackle, but he doesn't succeed, and that one is beautifully over the bar. Frank McGlynn showing the touches of a, a number 14, and not a number 4. Real predatory instinct here. He's up there, he looks composed, he looks confident, and he hits it over. And he's now got a goal and four points in this year's championship. A real all-star. O'Connor kicking it in, in as far as Michael Conroy. Three against him, tries to go by the first man, that's Neil McGee, gets it back towards Varley. Immediately surrounded with the referee, gets the whistle to his lips, free in from 13 metres. Plenty goal fans near us don't agree, they're up on their feet protesting. But it's got to be a free. Killian O'Connor kicking, and he has managed to squeeze it in brilliantly. A fifth point from a free for the ball and cover player, only 20 years of age, a student teacher at St. Pat's. Here it is again from a very, very sharp angle. Christy Toy kicks it very, very long. It's ambitiously there, and McFadden made it happen. He's won it from Keane. It's two players against him. Down he goes, and the referee's blown his whistle. It's got to be a free in. That was almost a hopeless ball, you thought, from uh, Christy Toy, but somehow Colin McFadden made something of it, and from this, there's an opportunity for Dunny Gall to go five points up. And now, from all of that, it's Michael Murphy, composed, enjoying his afternoon at Croke Park. Why wouldn't he? He's had a storming match. And now, he scored a goal and two from this angle. He's able to put it over. Almost at his ease, if that's possible in an All Ireland final. But now he's got a goal and three. On comes Jason Gibbons, who's playing some great football in club football for uh, his club in Mayo. On he comes now, plays for Ballantubber, of course, as well, which is uh, James Horan's club. They need a goal, I would imagine, Mayo. Racing for it here is Colin McFadden, the 29 year old player who had thought about giving up football, was pers persuaded by his brother in law to come back. His brother in law, of course, is Jim McGuinness. Back it comes here once again to Rory Kavanagh. Dangerous ball in! Could have gone anywhere, it's uh, gone over the bar. And it's Michael Murphy once again. Goal and four now for him. Well, he came in there fearlessly, tacked that ball, got there ahead of the goalkeeper. There was nothing David Clark could do about it, or Jer Cafferkey. Sheer determination won that for Michael Murphy. Here's Kevin McLaughlin, everybody for Danny Gold virtually back there, the kind of blanket defence, but Richie Feeney trying to steal a march on them all, onto the right and hitting it over the bar. His second ever championship point and a valuable contribution. It just about keeps Mayo going here, five between them once again, but now the time ticking down to about five minutes from the finish. And the Mayo fans here just trying to raise a cheer once again now to get right behind the team if they can win some primary possession in and around midfield because Donegal have been known in the past to take their foot off the pedal metaphorically for the last few minutes Lee Keegan advancing hitting with some difficulty it's up into the air oh lands on the netting and goes over the bar amazingly highly ambitious well, he's a great driving force, Lee King, and the 22-year-old from Westport, playing today in his seventh championship match. Down it came, bang onto the netting, and now it's a four-point game, and nobody's giving up just yet where Mayo's concerned. Now Neil Gallagher, space on the left-hand side. Frank McGlynn cleverly using that space. Back in again, he comes towards him. Beautifully constructed, neatly choreographed, and finished by Neil Gallagher knocking it over the bar, the big physically imposing midfielder gets up 
to get just his first point in this match, the third in this year's championship, three or four players involved, and that could be very, very important. Highly decisive, I would think. I agree with you, Derek. It's a decisive score of the match, and it is uh, probably set the seal for a Donegal victory. In here, as far as Killian O'Connor, all his points have come from freeze when he was in around full forward. Jason Gibbons hitting it long, very neatly so, over the bar. Really good play by Jason Gibbons there. And uh, Jason Gibbons getting his first ever championship point. But is it far too late and far too little because there are still four between them? As Kevin McLaughlin carries it forward once again in the 70th minute of this final, where Mayo made an awful start, battled hard to get themselves back into it, but there was always that gap. Closest they could get to it for about three minutes, maybe here, you never know, still possible, stumbling, falling, and eventually the referee has gone in from a distance and said, play on, and Mayo looked like they were lining up for a score there. You have Shamey O'Shea and you have Jason Gibbons in there, foraging, waiting. Three minutes of added time are going to be played as we watch this again. Alan Freeman, Shamey O'Shea, down went Rory Cavanagh. Still it was Shamey O'Shea. Yeah, I think in fairness, Shamey lost his balance that time. I don't think he was fouled and Durkin is perfectly entitled to yep. gather the ball inside the small rectangle like that. It's sheer agony for Mayo and their followers. No county deserves to lose like they have lost. But it happens, that sport, and we all know about that. They ran into a very, very tough Donegal team as Michael Murphy went down injured. It's all over! And Donegal are the All-Ireland champions! They'll leap for joy! Jim McGuinness there, Rory Kavanagh! Rory Gallagher, I should say. 20 years on from the day the Tier Connell men won their first. They've won another. Then it was Brian McIniff calling the shots. And now it's Jim. Jim McGuinness has guided a group of talented, highly motivated players. He's challenged them to do it his way. And the players have bought into the notion. And they've realised their potential. And the crowds are staying off the field. It must be very hard for them. This stunning goal side has beaten Mayo. And it's abject misery for the Connor champions. But today's day is... For Jim McGuinness and for Danny Ball, they've done it from a near empty base two years ago in Cross McGlen, where they lost a qualifier to Armagh, and they've come through two Ulster campaigns unbeaten to inflict yet another final defeat on Loftus Mayo. They'll be taking that Sam Maguire Cup home. Danny Ball, the Masters. Danny Ball, the champions. Jim has done it. They've all done it. Danny Ball are the new winners of the Sam Maguire, and an, emo an emotional. Quite emotional tsunami is set to sweep over Donegal. 1992 has been bridged. 2012, Michael Murphy from Glen Swilly, only 23 years of age, takes the Sam McGuire Cup from Liam O'Neill. Donegal are champions! Champions for the second time and very, very worthy champions. Celebration time at Broad Park where 82,000 people have witnessed the occasion. We have them! Look, they're on the heron. Look, they're on coming to the class gale, the carriage gale. Tass and Doan Aram and Corrin Shaw and Glacu. They're referring to the now. So, Jim McGuinness, where do we start? From every man, woman in Donegal, both players and people alike, I owe him a massive debt of gratitude. The man's worth ethic is just absolutely, it's undescribable. His passion for Donegal football throughout the last two years and over his playing career is another thing that's undescribable. And again, a massive debt of thanks towards Jim from the players and also from the people of Donegal. Thanks a million, Jim. One last thing. Jimmy's winning matches. Jimmy's winning games. Jimmy's bringing Sammy back to Donegal again.
we found our singer for the Eurovision. Yeah, Johnny Gold's day. Now the full-time score here in this All-Ireland final, it's uh, Johnny Gold, two goals and 11 points. Mayo, 13 points. Well, here at the Burlington Hotel, the victory celebrations, I can assure you, are in full swing. And as you can imagine, the crowd here in the banquet room have been enjoying every minute of those highlights, every kick of the ball, and why wouldn't they? Well, the Sam Maguire Cup is here with us in the room, the winning team are here with us in the room, and with me here on our presentation podium right now, we have the winning manager, Jim McGuinness, and also, of course, ladies and gentlemen, your winning captain, Michael Murphy. <laughs> gentlemen, many, many congratulations to start off. After the match, Jim, obviously, scenes of sheer joy, but I'd imagine it's going to take at least a couple of days for the significance of all this to actually sink in. Ah, well, Michael, I mean, obviously, uh, there was great anticipation in the county coming up to the game, and everybody was hopeful that the, the team could get over the line, but I suppose it's only when the final whistle goes and that release, really, yeah. uh, of emotion. And um, I suppose, from my own point of view and from the players' point of view, we're very in tune with what it means to the people of Donegal and what it means to the county and, and everybody around the, the world looking in today uh, with a Donegal background and it's, it's just fantastic as opposed to, to yeah. have this cup sitting here beside us and um, it's something that will live in, in my memory anyway for the rest of my life and it's just a great privilege to be part of this setup. Well you see this is the whole thing Jim, Donegal have won All-Ireland up to today. Won All Ireland in history. You haven't been in the final for 20 years. You were installed as favourites for the match, and I detected a little bit of nervousness in your play today. Well, um, I suppose it's fair enough comment. Um, I think we started the game very well. Of course, yeah. We were we were doing a lot of things right that I suppose we had talked about before the game. There was a period in the game then maybe where we didn't execute our own game plan to the way we would like to um, and that opened the door really for, for Mayo and they obviously capitalised very very quickly, they're a very good side, very well drilled side, very motivated team and uh, they were always going to come back and do yeah. it anyway but you know um, from our own point of view I think when we got them in at half time, got them settled down again and refocused on what was important for us, I think we, we played a lot more like ourselves in the second half. Michael Murphy, Jim is winning matches. <laughs> You're, um, you're, a, you're a fair footballer, you're a fair singer as well in fairness to you. People are talking about the Eurovision entry maybe next year for Donegal. I think I'll, uh, I think I'll leave the singing career uh, well and truly behind there after the day's performance. Um, I suppose it was just uh, it was lovely to go over the line, I suppose as a, as a group of players and as a, as a backroom team and everybody within the whole circle. And, um, it was just a fantastic, I suppose, experience to be to be out in an All Ireland final day, and I suppose to experience that and experience the colour that was there today and the whole atmosphere. It was fantastic, but not only that, I suppose, to come away with the with the one and the medal and the trophy is even is even more special. We saw Jim coming up to you after the match, and he was saying a few things to you. What was he saying after the game? Yeah, I suppose he was congratulating us number one. Um, I suppose you as know, usual, you weren't listening to him. Ah, no, uh, <laughs> which we always we always listen. Um, I suppose one of the I suppose main things that the gentlemen and Rory and everybody will say when we go out onto the pitch, you know, that we won't let us, uh, I suppose, um, we won't let us forget that we're, we're representing Donegal and the people of Donegal, you know, and again that there was mentioned after the game, and I suppose that's something we hold close to our heart, and maybe over the years where we couldn't represent them as best we can, it was it was nice to be able to to represent them uh, in the way we could there. Well, it's a fantastic thing to be a winning captain. And people, Donegal people all over Croke Park today here at the function tonight, Jim, thoroughly enjoying this. Of course, not everybody has been able to be in Croke Park today or here tonight. No, um, Pat Shovlin, our, uh, our goalkeeping coach, his, his wife had a baby on uh, Wednesday, so... Uh, <laughs> Chrissy is not able to be here with us today, um, but I'm sure she'll be, she'll be welcoming him home with open arms. Yeah. And uh, my own father as well, who hasn't, uh, I suppose, been that well in the last number of months. And uh, I'm just disappointed that he's not here. But um, I, know he's, uh, I know he's looking in tonight. I know, I know he's looking in today. And uh, I'm sure, like everybody else in Donegal, he's, he's very proud of this group of players. I have no doubt he is.